Maka's guides. <laughs> Hey everyone, Maka back with Doom Eternal, the Ancient Gods 1 DLC, and this is Mission 2, the Blood Swamp, and I'll be taking you through the entire mission, I'll show you exactly what to do, where to go, and on our way through the mission, I will show you all of the things you could miss. I'll show you BFG ammo locations, I'll show you extra life one-ups, I will show you all of the codex pages, the secret encounters, and the support rune that you can grab. Another pretty long mission as well. You can see that this uh, video is clocked in over 50 minutes and this is an edited down, optimized run. I basically don't really die and don't reload checkpoints and I know exactly where to go and what to do and it still took almost a full hour. We're playing on that normal difficulty by the way. Right off the bat, you can just drop down into the pool of water. There will be a large tentacle that comes up when you try to make your way near the end of the water. So I'm just going to use some rockets to shoot it down. Once that tentacle is taken care of, you can then use the wall climbs and the ledges to make your way across to the next area. Once we reach the next area, just take care of all of the enemies and watch out for these exploding bulbs. If you haven't noticed already, you probably should have, but as you walk by them, it kind of triggers them and they explode and let out some gas. And then that gas hurts you over time and can be a pretty easy way to die if you are not careful. And there will be a Marauder here, so take care of them using our regular Ballista and Super Shotgun combo. Once all of the enemies are taken care of, we'll need to flip the switch to open the door, but there's a couple of things to grab on the way there, so let's grab them. Go up the ledge towards the kind of flaming swings, and instead of going across them, you actually want to drop down into the water just past the ledge, and here we can melee through a wall to find a secret. Inside here, there is some health, but more importantly, there is the support rune. So go up to it, interact with it, and pick the rune that you prefer. I'm going to pick the second one, which allows me to grab back my extra life, but I'm not actually going to equip it. So if you don't equip it, it actually doesn't really do anything. But now we are ready to move on. We'll go past the swings on the left here, and go. then we'll have to double jump across the large gap. As soon as we're across the gap, there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind. So drop down, and then you'll notice there's some water. Drop down into the water. Make sure you grab the dive suit first. We can take care of the enemies if we want to. We actually don't have to, but just get it out of the way so we don't have to worry about it. If you grab the dive suit and jump into the water looking back to where we came from, you can find our first codex page of this video. So make sure you grab this codex page. Feel free to open up your map if you want to see it on there just in case, though. And now stay in the water and dive down as deep as you can and this will reveal a little bit of a pathway here you can buy some, get some armor and as you emerge on the other side hop out of the water and you will notice a couple of things we can grab but most importantly you just want to grab the auto map this will populate your the rest of your map which is pretty important and if we jump up to this ledge, it'll start a small fight. And at the end of the fight, we can also break open a wall in order to grab an extra life one up. So make sure you grab that before you leave the area. And when you leave the area, you'll flick a switch, which will open a door.
With the door open, we can walk forward and go down. You'll notice that there is a left door and a right door in order to proceed with the mission. It's up to you whichever one you want to do in whatever order you prefer. I'm going to go for the left door because it just felt right. As we go through the left door, we can be pretty quick. We can actually skip a good majority of this uh, of these enemies and of the platforms at the beginning here. You'll reach this area where there is a turret. I'm going to take care of it just to be safe. And there will also be a Kako Demon. Again, I'm going to take care of it just to be safe. You can actually leave all of this alive if you want to. But it makes grabbing the extra life that's coming up a little bit more difficult. You'll swing across this gap. And there will be a turret at the bottom of this kind of uh, little platform. So take out the turret. And now we can make a somewhat easy jump towards an extra life 1-up. By going down on that lowest turret, on that lowest platform where the turret was, and then jumping across the gap towards our objective, but not up towards our objective. We're going to go down in the direction of our objective, and we should be able to grab that extra life one up before continuing on with the next room. Now, as soon as we drop down, we basically just want to ignore all of these enemies and just run past them into the back room. There is a buff totem here, and if you don't take care of it, these enemies will basically spawn forever and be very difficult. So, we're going to ignore them, jump up on the ledge on the left, and follow the pathway. Once we drop down, a marauder will spawn. This Marauder is buffed, so they will take a little bit longer than some of the other ones. Unfortunately, in my other playthrough, I actually lost a life to this Marauder, which is not very good because the level gets significantly harder than this. You want to keep those lives as much as possible just in case for the end of the level. But take care of the Marauder, take care of the buff totem. Once you do that, a new enemy type will spawn called the Spirit. I'll tell you how they work. Now, after pressing the button and dropping down, you will be introduced to the spirit. What you want to do here is make sure you take out your uh, plasma gun and make sure you change it to the mode that allows you to hook onto someone and just milk them. I don't know what it's called, the microwave beam. And you'll notice that sometimes enemies will glow blue. This means they have a spirit inside of them. And as soon as they are killed, we have to do this overheat beam thing to the spirit or else it will possess another demon and keep going and going and going. The spirit makes the enemies way faster, way more aggressive, and allows them to shoot a lot faster, which therefore they will do a lot more damage. So the spirits are going to be a new enemy type we really want to focus on. Whenever we see any enemy glowing blue, that's going to be our number one priority from now on. And you have to make sure that after you kill that enemy and the spirit escapes, that you use that microwave, microwave beam in order to basically have them explode. From then on there, we can continue to the next room after meleeing the block, and there will be a bunch of fighting here. Try to get out of the murky water as it's really hard to see. There will be a turret, and there will be a lot of um, little bulbs that break, and they trigger the poisonous gas. There will also be a doom hunter that spawns here, so take care of them. Just kill all of the enemies, and before we leave this area, there are some collectibles we can grab.
Now, after you complete this fight, hopefully you're a little bit better than me and you don't lose your life accidentally, you will be able to melee the block. Now, instead of meleeing the block, I'm going to actually show you where you can find the extra life 1-up. From where you can melee the block, turn around and look directly behind you. Here there is a body of water which we can dive into. Once we dive into, we can dash through the broken wall, and behind that broken wall is the extra life. So now we just want to continue platforming towards the checkpoint marker. If you're using your map at this point, you may notice that there is a secret encounter just kind of behind that wall. And you may think that there is a way to get to it. There actually isn't a way to get to it for quite a while. We have to go like all the way around and through this area and then we can backtrack to the secret encounter. There's also going to be these pickups that basically just give you full armor. I'll show you most of them. Uh, that was a good one to grab. But here we can drop down and just continue along the path. There is a uh, gas tank that we can use for the chainsaw, and there will be a bunch of enemies down here. It is extremely hard to see down here as it is extremely murky. One of the enemies down here will have a spirit, but it's very hard to see that spirit as the blue glow is hard to see. It's on this Arachnotron I'm fighting against right now. As soon as I take that out that Arachnotron, I should try to take out the spirit using that microwave beam. And hopefully, if I done correctly, they will be gone, and then I can just start focusing on some of the other enemies. Once all of the enemies are dead, you can open up the minimap to try to figure out where you are, or just follow the checkpoint counter thing at the top of the screen. There's a small ledge we can jump up on, and then we can jump up on the ledge just above that. And then we can punch the block. Punching the block will open up a gate, but it's a timed gate, so we gotta be pretty quick here. And then we can do a couple of swing bars. It is a very specific, uh, you know, solution to this. So it's jump, jump, dash, jump, dash, jump and then jump again onto the wall. You have to grab on if you don't have that last dash, so watch out. Then you will enter a room, but instead turn around and go up behind you through the cracked wall, and here you can refill your armor to 100%. Now, as you drop into the next room, you may notice a gore nest, as for our first secret encounter, assuming you took the left path and not the right path. But unfortunately, we actually can't use this secret encounter until much later on in the video. So I'm basically just going to ignore it for now and continue towards the objective. Now in this next fight, there are a lot of tough enemies, and just after this fight, we'll be picking up some BFG ammo. So if you're full on BFG ammo, feel free to just burn that bullet. 
and we can grab and refill the BFG ammo to two just after this fight. But after you clear everyone, the door will open. However, don't head through the door. With all of the enemies taken care of, don't go up the ramp to exit, instead turn around and go the opposite way. There is a small body of water here in some of this fog, and you can actually just jump into it and you'll sink. And then if you follow this water, you'll end up picking up a radiation symbol so you can survive a little bit longer. And on the other end, you will pop up out of the water, and then what we can do is jump across the gap. And here we will see an empowered demon. We'll want to take care of this demon as quickly as possible so they don't take care of us or the other way around. And uh, once you take care of him and the Mancubus, you can basically just run forward, jump across the gap. And across the gap, we can find a Codex page. I believe this is our second one. And we can also find a BFG ammo refill. I am not very good at taking my own advice, so I actually am... F oh, I'm actually not full on BFG ammo, so never mind. We take that and we're going to use it. Uh, moving forward, and then we can just continue to the path we were on. You will then reach what is essentially the last outdoor area on the left path and a bunch of enemies will spawn, most importantly a very aggressive Baron which has the spirit inside of him. You'll see that he never stops running at you and he is extremely quick and hard to dodge. You can't even freeze him with an ice grenade so I would just recommend using probably the rocket launcher or the ballista or some combat shotgun or um, super shotgun move around the map unfortunately I lost a life to them because I wasn't careful but once you do take the spirit out of him make sure you burn that spirit with that beam so that they don't uh, get back into a new enemy clear out everyone in this room which will open up all of the doors and the switch but do not interact with the switch yet Now remember like 5 or 10 minutes ago when I showed you where that Slayer Gate was? So instead of going through the gate, there is a back door that opened up right here from this area. And if you follow the path down and to the right, you can find a meleeable block just past this breakable wall. If you melee this block, it will go down and fall onto a push pad. And that push pad will open the gate and we are back at that secret encounter that we couldn't access before. So as soon as we interact with it, it'll spawn a bunch of enemies, including a Whiplash, a Mancubus, and I believe like a Baron of Hell. I'm not 100% sure, but this one is actually a little bit difficult, so I would highly recommend waiting for your grenades to respawn and try to be quick and make quick work of all of the enemies. As if you fail this once or twice, you can pretty much completely run out of ammo, and this secret encounter almost becomes impossible. You may want to load your last checkpoint if you're struggling, but if you do it correctly, you should be done, and then we can continue kind of back in the direction we came from and toggle the switch shown at the checkpoint.
So now that we're back, feel free to interact with that button. We can now go through the door. This will start a small cutscene. We're basically going to be doing what I guess the game calls a trial. But just take out your precision rifle and we will be doing a little bit of parkour. So grab the climbable wall, grab the second climbable wall, watch out for the fire, do better than me. And then just continue along the path, jump across this gap, making sure to shoot the target as you do so to land on the next climbable wall. Here you can use the swing bar, watch out for the fire, you're going to have to shoot the target again to open up another door, and then we can proceed forward. Now coming up right here, there is BFG ammo, which I actually forgot about because I am full on BFG ammo. But past this door and to the left, you have optional BFG ammo just through a crack in the wall, basically right next to you. Instead, we're going to continue along the main path and go to the right. Following along, there's a couple of fights here, and we'll make our way to one of the top platforms where I'll rejoin you. With all of the enemies taken care of, do not go towards the checkpoint. Instead, you can jump to a climbable wall in the distance, and from this, you can jump above the door we used to enter the area. You'll need a well-timed double jump and double dash to get here, and you can find another codex page, which we will grab, and then we can descend down and continue along the regular path. Now, as we enter this room, there will be a ton of stuff. Uh, standing on the platform that is marked as our checkpoint will begin the large fight. There is an ammo of BFG in the middle, so make sure you use at least one of your BFG bullets so that you can grab that ammo and, you know, move forward with it. This is a really long and tough fight, honestly. You're going to want to make sure you're managing your armor and health pretty well. Additionally, there are buff totems. When those spawn, they are your number one priority, so make sure you take care of the buff totems. They are usually up high and in the corners a little bit, so you should be able to find them pretty easily. There's a lot of ammo and armor along the ground as, as well as health, and you'll definitely want to chainsaw for extra uh, ammo when you need it. Now, in terms of when the best time to use the BFG ammo is... There are a bunch of arch vials that will spawn, as well as a couple of, like, gigantic barons, or, or I don't even know what they're called. I forget already, but uh, basically the giant dudes that just, like, chase you around that are, like, four times bigger than all the other guys. Those are pretty good people to use your BFG ammo on, uh, if, especially if you're struggling. You uh, This is going to be one of the hardest fights, probably, in this entire level. There's a second fight just like this one when we do the right side of the path. But uh, using most of your BFG ammo isn't a bad idea, honestly.
things. Now, I know we've only done one of the two paths in the game. Uh, there's a left one and a right one. We just completed the left one. But the right one is way faster and way easier, in my opinion. So we're actually most of the way done the level at this point. For this path, we're just going to walk forward and basically just fight nonstop. There are a couple of collectibles kind of along the way. But there will be this new mechanic where a dog spawns and he provides a shield against the poisonous gas that's near you and you have to follow this dog to the end or else you take a ton of damage and that damage will kill you so what we have to do is just complete this entire section and at the end all of that fog and toxic gas will lift and then we're going to backtrack from the end back to the beginning to pick up all the collectibles that we missed so there are some collectibles, I'm going to be missing them on purpose, or they wouldn't be worth it anyways because I would die grabbing them. But during this section, just keep following the dog and keep doing the battles. At the end, there will be a Marauder. This Marauder battle is a lot harder because the Marauder also has a turret helping him, and I believe there might be a Spirit at some point. But you're basically going to have like three or four waves of enemies. And after you kill all of them, the dog's going to move you to the next kind of totem pole, and so on and so on and so on. This lasts about 5 or 10 minutes, depending on your skill and difficulty level.
With all of the enemies killed and everything ready to go, we can now press the button, but we're not going to do that. Instead, we are going to backtrack to all the collectibles we missed along the way. We missed them on purpose, technically, but at the end of the day, you have to backtrack for the secret encounter, as getting to the secret encounter during the poisonous gas is pretty much impossible. You can notice the secret encounter through this gate right here to my left behind me, and we're just going to keep backtracking, keep going backwards through the level. You can open up your map if you need to, but there should be a codex page sitting on a ledge as you backtrack pretty obviously in front of you. And then if you jump up to the ledge right above that you, and you drop down to the left, there's a little bit of a secret path here. And if we just continue following this path, it will eventually lead us to that secret encounter. So go through the breakable wall, keep following the path. You'll be able to pick up some armor and some health. There's a climbable wall, and then you'll have to do a small jump across a another climbable wall. And you actually have to push this block down to open up a gate as well. And that'll bring us to the secret encounter. This secret encounter that's coming up isn't too bad. I believe it's way easier than the other one in my opinion, but you may beg to differ. I would highly recommend that you have some rockets ready, as well as always, I recommend the ice bombs. As soon as you pull the heart out, a couple of enemies will spawn. There's a couple of small enemies. I believe there is a Mancubus and then one of the big dudes and a Caco Demon. You definitely want to get that grenade from your regular combat shotgun into the Caco Demon mouth as quickly as possible to just get rid of them. And then you can just use your grenades and your ice bombs as well as your lock-on rockets to take care of the rest of the enemies and make easy work of them. Unfortunately, I used a little bit too much of my ammo on some of the other enemies, so I had to switch to my Arc Blast and my uh, Blood Punch, but I did it with 7 seconds left, and I would consider this a bad run. After you complete the Secret Encounter, I do believe this is all of the 7 missable collectibles in the level. And at this point, we can continue forward to the checkpoint, interact with the switch to open the door. I did grab that armor before opening the door, you're free to do so as well, but this platforming puzzle is similar to the other one. There's a couple of climbable walls and a couple of jumps and double dashes you'll need to do to work your way up to the very top. It's not too bad, this stuff is pretty basic at this point, I think. As soon as you reach this upcoming section, you will face a big bad enemy and they will be consumed with the spirit. So they're going to be our number one priority. Uh, ammo is a big struggle here as that spirited enemy takes so much health. There are a couple of cue ball enemies if you forget what those do. They basically allow you to like explode um, into your enemies and you know they deal more damage than a regular explosion. So they can be pretty useful. But for this guy, there's really not much you can do. He's just so fast that even if you're sprinting and dashing away from him, he's still going to be hitting you. As soon as you do take him out, though, which hopefully you have not too many issues with, make sure you take care of that spirit and then clear out the rest of the enemies. There is also a secret supercharge here. If you are in a pickle from the opposite end of where we entered, there is a breakable wall. Once you break it down, there is a supercharge there. 
feel free to grab it if you're on a harder difficulty. It will help you take a couple of extra hits. This is another giant arena fight with BFG ammo in the middle. So if you're maxed out on BFG ammo, you're going to want to spend at least one bullet of it during the fight and then you can replenish. I'd probably use one or two at least uh, as this fight is very difficult. At the beginning, they will spawn just a bunch of kind of regular enemies. You'll take them all out and then a couple of giant enemies will spawn. They're just really big bullet sponges, but they can really get in your way, and I don't think the flow and movement of this arena is very good, so it's very easy to get stuck in a corner, or as you're moving backwards, just basically push yourself right into another enemy. During the fight, there will also be a spirited Arachnotron, so when you see the blue Arachnotron, make sure you take them out, and then take that spirit away using that microwave beam, and additionally... Uh, there will be two arch vials that spawn at the same time, one kind of near the back, one kind of near the front. That's probably a pretty good time to use one of your BFG bullets and just shoot it across the map. Do as much damage to the arch vials as quickly as possible. Arch vials are our, usually our number one priority as they are the worst enemies to have on the arena floor. Uh, having an arch vial, they basically just keep respawning enemies and keep buffing enemies. So it is very uh, important that we grab them as soon as they spawn. Once you take them all out, interact with the checkpoint, and that'll bring us back to the center of the map where we can finish this fight.
only serve the makers in all their glory. Now, at the end of this level, there is a fight which is pretty difficult, and I'm going to regret saying this, but I actually don't think it has to be that difficult, even though I end up losing a life in this clip. What we need to do is, or what I would recommend doing, is using your uh, regular assault rifle and making sure you have the precision bolt on, and we're basically going to be quick scoping the eyeballs inside of the cube every time it appears. I think it takes eight shots each before it basically gets defeated and drops down into a meleeable block. As soon as it is meleeable, then we're just gonna hit it into the center. And there are three waves of this. The first wave has one block, the second wave has one block, and the third wave has two blocks. And there are also enemies chasing you around as you do this. Now, what I found to be the best is just to pretty much ignore the enemies and just keep dashing around the outside of the arena in a circle. Once you do get hit a couple of times and you are a little bit low on health, that's when you want to use your ice bomb, your torch, your grenade, and your chainsaw as quickly as possible on as many enemies as possible. This will replenish your ammo, armor, and health as quickly as you can, and then we can go back to just ignoring enemies full time. If you get in the proper swing of things, you can pretty much just dance along the outside edge of this arena without ever getting hit by any of the enemies and just quick scoping the eyeball every now and again when it does open up. Again, I do believe in this clip, in my original clip I didn't, but in this clip that you're watching, I do believe I end up losing a life, which kind of sucks. Uh, but I don't think this fight's too bad as long as you understand the mechanics and are using the correct gun. In the tutorial, they do tell you to use the turret or a different gun. I found that this quick scope method was probably the best for me. Additionally, in this third round, when there are two eyeballs, just shoot whichever one's open. Don't worry about trying to completely destroy one of them before you work on the other one. Whenever you see an opening, just take it. Also, don't rub along the outside edges as they do slow you down and they leave you vulnerable to getting hit by the turrets. But otherwise, as you defeat both of these blocks and melee them back into the middle of the area, you will complete the level. Only one more level to go, which is a sort of a boss level, but it's also the shortest level of the three levels in the DLC. Thank you so much for watching this video. If it was helpful, don't forget to drop a like. Share this video with a friend. A super special thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. And hopefully, I see you soon. Peace.